Hello friends, welcome to Alaska, and welcome to, after just two days, what I believe I can safely say is the most beautiful town in Alaska that I've ever visited. Welcome to Sitka. So today's actually the last day of my trip. I'm here on a work trip, but I wanna show you the view from my hotel room. You can see right out there, we've got the ocean, We've got all sorts of islands, just beautiful buildings, lots of history. And my team and I have a little bit of time before we head to the airport tonight to fly back to Anchorage. And so I wanted to show you just a little bit of Sitka. But I've, I've got to tell you, I've always said that my favorite place in Alaska, what I believe to be the most beautiful place in Alaska, is Juneau on a sunny day. The last few days in Sitka, the sun has been shining and it is... It is jaw-droppingly gorgeous. It is a city that is filled with history. It was Alaska's first capital. It is where the transfer of ownership of Alaska from Russia to the United States took place. There's just so much here in Sitka to see and to love. And uh, we're gonna go explore as much as we possibly can today. Stop number one for us today is actually gonna be lunch at a local restaurant called Beak. But I just wanna show you. One of the, I think they said there's four or five harbors. Uh, they told us this morning at a meeting there are more boats um, here than any other harbor in Alaska. Not like more tonnage, but like the number of boats, which I thought was pretty cool. Next stop here in Sitka is actually the place I wanted to visit the most. This is called Castle Hill. And it sits kind of above town. You can see the downtown area right over there. This, the former site of Baranoff Castle, and this is the location where the ownership of Alaska was transferred from Russia to the United States. Look at how beautiful this is. You can see right here on the hill, they have all sorts of just different plaques. They've still got some cannons over there. What an amazing piece of Alaskan history. Like what an amazing place in the history of our state. And here you go, you can see on one of these plaques, it says it was here in front of the castle that the transfer ceremony took place on October 18th, 1867. This is another really cool uh, kind of info plaque. It says the first American flag was raised by a color guard from Company F, 9th Infantry to signify the transfer of Alaska from Tsarist Russia. The first 49 star American flag was raised on July 4th, 1959 by a color guard from the first battle group 9th uh, Infantry to signify the statehood of Alaska. So not only is this the place where transfer of ownership from Russia to Alaska took place, this is also the place that the first 49th star flag was raised when Alaska finally became a state. We just left Castle Hill and we're gonna uh, take a little time to walk up and down some of the streets of Sitka because it just, this town feels like a movie set you guys. It is maybe one of the most hallmark feeling towns we've ever been to and I just love the history here because even this chocolate moose store there's a sign out front that says the russian counting house in school it says the russian american company used a log building formerly on the site to transact business of the fur trade maps made in the cartography classrooms are now in moscow archives americans used the building for offices post office and library until it burned in 1936. well i made my first purchase in sitka a bag of russian tea um i've never had russian tea I'm not exactly sure what it tastes like. It smells amazing, and uh, Gwen, who I'm traveling with, uh, she said that it's kind of like hot tang, which is one of my, like with spices, that hot tang is one of my favorite winter cold drinks. So, excited to try this. And it feels appropriate to bring Russian tea home from Sitka. And the next door we went in may officially have the greatest bath mat I've ever seen. It just says, <laughs> it just says, get naked. <laughs> oh, they do carry North Pole Coffee Company. This is some of the best. They actually make the best blueberry coffee I think I've ever had. Uh, I've never tried their butterscotch. I bet it's really good. I've also never tried their cranberry cream. And you all know that I love a town that builds part of its identity around Sasquatch. Sitka is full of the cutest shops. We actually just got to go across the street to a store called Cellar, where I bought a lot of this stuff from. I'll show you a little bit later. Um, it was one of the Shop 49 stores, which was cool. Got to meet them. Thought that was fun. And now we're in a store across the street that sells a lot of Pendleton stuff. And we're kind of still walking through Sitka, and you can see there is the historic St. Michael Cathedral, which kind of stands here right in the middle of downtown. 
established 1837. This is like the most seaside Alaskan little sign. Uh, everything you can want, hot dogs, cold drinks, Dramamine. came in the visitor center here at the Sitka National Historic Park and there's all sorts of totems outside but look how beautiful it is when you walk in. You see they have exhibits over there, they have a film room and he said that the cultural center with some of the oldest totems is actually through here. We just came into this room that houses the oldest of the totems here at the park. And I've got to say this, when you walk in, is just beautiful. You can see we've got some smaller segments of a totem over here. I thought this was, I thought this was really interesting because this is just one little segment. I mean, look at how tall this is. Look at how huge this is. But this was only this piece of that original totem. Isn't that amazing? Uh, donated in 1901 to the people of Alaska. And that's what is left. And we were just talking to the ranger here and he was explaining, I thought this was really interesting. You'll notice a lot of the totems here are from like the turn of the century. So 1900, late 1800s. And you wonder why aren't there totems that are older than that? Well, they're made of wood, they weren't preserved. And so essentially the totems just kind of rotted away and they were replaced by new totems. We just stepped outside the totem visitor center. You can see you've got a totem pole over there. We've got one over here, one over here, and then there's more on this path we're gonna go walk through, but walking down by the water first. Can you imagine a more beautiful location than this? Just all of the little islands out there with the trees. Uh, Allison said she just saw a seal kind of swimming around out here. They have whales out here. It is just, I don't know, when I think of the most picturesque Alaska towns, I think this is now the winner. See the town of Sitka back up over there. Now we've headed up actually onto the Totem Trail. You can see we have a pole here on the left and the trail walks through the woods. It's like the most beautiful location, just trees towering above us. Looks like we have another totem up here. And as you walk around the totem trail, there are so many different totems you can just come right up to. This is crazy. And then you turn around from the totem and you're back looking at this. Never gets old. You can see we got one big old bald eagle just sitting down there on the water's edge. Lots of seagulls around. But look at the views. You can see there's a totem standing in this big green area. And right over here we have this plaque that says the Kiksadi clan of the Clinket tribe fought here against invading forces in 1804. The Kiksadi men and women sought to preserve and protect their land and its resources for this and future generations. At this point, the Kiksadi marked the beginning of the survival march and the dawn of a new era. We just finished the walk on the trail, and here's where we went. Um, the visitor center, which I think is here, we walked all down through here, walked all over there, and then back to right there, where we are. Nice little one mile walk, that was beautiful, and it ends with more totems. Well, in my opinion, if you're coming to Sitka, the Sitka National Historic Park Visitor Center and the Totem Trail, 100% something you need to do while you're in town. One of the people we met with this morning in Sitka told us about this place called Harbor Mountain Road. That If you drive up the road through lots and lots of switchbacks, you come to this amazing overlook. And he did not lie to us. Look at how peaceful and beautiful this is. It is windy up here. It is cold, but holy cow, the views. 
we're still here in the Harbor Mountain area on this little wooden boardwalk. Look at the views around us though. It's really pretty because there's like some water through here, but most of it is frozen because of how cold it is. But you can hear a little bit of a trickle from right in there. You can see there's a pavilion, like a little picnic area up here, and I think that's where we'll get some pretty good views. You can see we made it to the top, got a little picnic area here. And how about that for your picnic view? This is so much of what you want and think about when you think of Alaska. The mountains, the ocean, uh, the forests, the feeling of like big landscape, big land, and then you just plopped in the middle of it. I really do feel like I could just sit here all day and never get tired of this. Look at that eagle right there in the tree alongside the road. Our next stop brought us down Sawmill Creek Road and I am officially out of words. Holy cow. Now the road does continue. We drove all the way out there. It turns into a gravel road and there's not a ton to see out there. Looked like there was a couple hiking trails. Uh, so we turned around, there's like a little pull off right here. And obviously, the views are amazing. And they went away, but the reason we pulled over here is there were a couple eagles kind of like dive bombing a group of seagulls. And we were hoping to see that, but looks like the fight is over actually. One of the eagles is now over there. The white spot flying against the trees over there. Next stop is Whale Park. We've heard more beautiful views and Look how fun this is. It's like the whale tail and the backs of the whales. It is nice because they have one of these viewing things here and it doesn't even take quarters. It's free to use. And the view, pretty awesome. This shows what kind of uh, marine life exists here in Silver Bay, which is the body of water right out here. You can see we've got humpback whales, herring uh, and this is interesting humpback whale may consume up to a ton of food a day holy cow one of my dreams uh this bubble net feeding is to see that happen there are videos online of it happening but i would love to see that in person someday there's another one of these info signs on humpback whales and this is interesting we've actually learned this before on some of our whale watching cruises that when you when the whale kind of like comes above water when you see the hump back the hunched back but then whenever you see the tail it means it's probably going for a deeper dive so if you just see the back you may see it kind of come up a couple times but when you see the tail you probably won't see it for several minutes well the time in sitka has come to an end we just finished it at harbor mountain brewing company where we had pizza for dinner it was probably the best meal we had uh in all of sitka and i've got to say this town i i think i probably said it way too many times in this vlog it is naturally beautiful. It is everything you would want from a Southeast Alaska town. I cannot believe Sherry and I have not been here before. Uh, so a full Sitka vlog with both her and I exploring this town coming up soon. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm gonna link to the places we went down below if you wanna check that stuff out. But my first taste of Sitka has made me wanna come back and just consume even more of it because this place, this place is special. Um, obviously, I'm back home in Anchorage, and this one came and got me. I was going to take a lift home, and then she was like, I'm on my way. <laughs> so even though it's late, thank you for getting me. Yeah. Um, when we get home, I want to show you the gifts I got you. They have not seen them yet. Oh, I haven't either. I know, and I want to talk a little <laughs> bit more about Sitka before we wrap up the vlog. But, it's good to be home. I got to spend my day in the prettiest city of Alaska. Now I get to come home to the prettiest girl in Alaska. <laughs> even after such a great trip like uh, I had in Sitka, it's always nice to come home. Uh, I do want to give Sherry her gifts now. I bought them at a couple little stores. I brought home four things. Two of them are for us, 
and two of them are just for her. So let me show you the two that are for, I'm gonna start with the two that are for us. This is one that they already know about. It is called Russian Tea. Um, I asked Gwen what it was like, and she said it's kind of like hot tang with spices. It smells really, really good. Oh, it smells really good. Really good. I know. I was a little bit skeptical, and then I smelled it, and I was like, oh, that's coming home with us. It smells like fall. And guess what season it is? <laughs> it's fall. Correct. So I got us Russian tea from Sitka. Okay. And then one of the other stores we went to is the Alaska Pure Sea Salt Company. And one of the things that they had was wild blueberry sea salt. So imagine this. We are making lemon drop martinis. Yes, we are. And the rim is with wild blueberry Alaskan sea salt. Yes, it is. Also, she said on things like um, lemon bars or anything lemon or even just sprinkled over ice cream to add a little blueberry sea salt. Yeah. That's it's awesome. Fruit, sweet potatoes, wild game, and fresh summer salad. Room and margarita, oh my god. In fact, there was probably seven or eight things in that store I wanted to bring home, but they were all liquid and I didn't check a suitcase because uh -huh. so I couldn't get through TSA. So that's a store we're gonna stock up on when we go to Sitka. Okay, now the stuff for you. Okay. And before I show the stuff, uh, this is the store that we helped with Shop 49th um, from the seller. Both of the things I got from Sherry are from there. Fingers crossed, I think she'll like them. Here <laughs> is something for you. My birthday. What's that? I feel like it's my birthday. It's still your birthday month. It's true. Okay. Ooh. So these are from oh, Trickster. Yep, a company in Juno called Trickster, which does like some unbelievable native art. And these I thought kind of matched your hair. They do, I love them. And it's the like the orca whale, the killer whale tail. Uh-huh. You like it? Love it. So I, cool. I also knew you didn't really have anything like that. No, I don't. I love that. Okay, now for the last thing. Okay. And this is something that I saw that I just, I don't know, it screamed Sherry to me. <laughs> oh, cute. And I figured we're going into Thanksgiving season, fall season. Plus, I love sweatshirts. I was just going to say sweatshirt season. Yeah. So, could you open it up and see it all? because I didn't open it up to see it all. I assumed that that's all that it was. <laughs> so cute. So friends, that was my day in Sitka. Um, I was actually supposed to go to Sitka early Monday morning, had some health issues that um, actually put the whole trip in jeopardy. I didn't think I was gonna go at all. So my team flew to Sitka, I stayed here in Anchorage, and then about midday Monday, made the decision that things were looking, uh, looking up enough that I could get a late night flight Monday night out and still be there for the last two days of work stuff. Um, we were down there for kind of a community-wide training on the issue of human trafficking. They, as a community of Sitka, are having conversations around what does trafficking look like, what can we do to fight it, uh, if survivors are identified, how can we support them, all of that kind of stuff. Really great conversations. Uh, they included us, the FBI, in those conversations, which was great. Um, and then today we had meetings this morning and then the whole rest of the day was free and we got to just explore Sitka because the nice thing about Sitka is that there's basically two flights out a day. There's an early morning flight and a late night flight. If you don't miss the early, if you miss the early morning flight, you're there all day. Uh, so we had all day and I cannot believe all of the stuff we got to do today, the history we got to see, how beautiful it was. And I, I've said it so many times in this vlog. I think it is my new number one most beautiful Alaskan town. I, and high standards. I mean, every town in Alaska is beautiful, but like. This to me, like, it's next level. It's next level. I cannot wait to take Sherry. We need to start planning a trip quickly. Are you down for that? Yeah. Friends, we love you guys so much. We'll see you on the next Leg Life video.